The World Health Organization says 5 billion people lack access to safe, a timely and affordable surgical care and anesthesia around the world. In low and middle income countries, 9 out of 10 people cannot access even the most basic surgical services. According to the Lancet Commission on Global Surgery, more than 25% of the global burden of disease is amenable to surgical care. Medical experts say surgery, obstetrics, and anesthesia care is essential to prevent and treat conditions related to reproductive maternal, newborn, and child health, communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, and trauma. The WHO says through universal access to safe, timely, and affordable surgery, the world could save many lives, prevent disability, and also promote economic growth as a result. Joining us in the studio for more is Dr. Ife Shofola, facial plastic and reconstructive surgeon and a co-founder and trustee of the Foundation for Special Surgery. Dr. Shofola, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Nine out of ten people do not have access to basic care in low and middle income countries. That's a big number. What does this translate to when we look at sub-Saharan Africa? You know, this number is real. And so you can imagine the negative impact yes. that uh, this problem has on the population. I mean, it's devastating. Yes. And uh, you, you can imagine that individual lives and society as a whole uh, will be seriously negatively impacted by uh, this problem. So when we uh, think about Africa in particular, mm. what would you say is the biggest threat to access to safe surgery? Well, uh, there are several problems. Uh, a couple, however, are the actual facilities, having the infrastructure available to perform uh, complex uh, surgical procedures, as well as the training. Uh, now, I want to emphasize here that the training, or lack thereof, does not really indicate anything to do with the intelligence of the surgeons on the continent. Okay. Okay, they are quite intelligent uh, throughout uh, a lot of our medical missions or humanitarian missions to uh, sub-Saharan Africa. I have found uh, that a lot of my colleagues there uh, have the book knowledge, but the practical uh, application is lacking because of lack, of lack of infrastructure and the expertise. So how do we solve this problem? As you say, there are so many different issues that are at stake here. Where do we start? Well, I think we start by uh, providing the infrastructure, mm -hmm. but then also filling uh, these hospitals or uh, infrastructure, so to speak, with the ability to train uh, surgeons as well as uh, nurses and all people that are involved yes. in the care of the patient from top to bottom. Uh, I would like to point out that a lot of my colleagues there uh, in Nigeria, for instance, uh, they may want to really go overseas to learn more. Well, when they do come overseas to the United States or to Europe, yes. the training t could take another 10, 15 years. Oh, yes. And as a result of that, they, uh, these surgeons do not normally return home. So taking so, the training to the continent is one of the things that yes. the Foundation for Special Surgery That's is doing. Correct. Talk to us about that quickly. Well, the Foundation for Special Surgery recognized this problem. Uh, we uh, recognized that uh, there were problems with you know, the training and uh, providing the actual uh, facilities to perform complex surgical procedures. Uh, so what the Foundation for Special Surgery has done is that we set up a foundation uh, to, uh, to set up this infrastructure. So build a hospital. Uh, build a hospital, and, okay. uh, outfit the hospital, and then provide the training for the next generation. Okay. And uh, so we have already uh, had uh, a lot of successes in different parts of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa uh, by uh, conducting our medical missions, okay. and we have seen, you know, the impact of training the next generation. And so now we want to make this uh, a permanent a absolutely yes and you're having a gala actually before we wrap that's correct yes. we're having a, our second annual gala at the uh, the uh, at the hotel in, DC, uh, in washington DC, at the Mayflower okay. hotel in to washington dc support correct to increase the awareness and okay. raise support uh, for this endeavor uh, we will certainly encourage people to uh, to come to this uh, event i absolutely. think they will actually have a wonderful time <laughs> oh, sure uh, and then we also have no <laughs> doubt we have to leave it there dr Shifula. Yes. good luck yes. with the gala thank no, you so thank much you for so joining much. us yeah.